Hello, I've um, listened to and watched all the Huberman Lab podcasts and compiled top 25 uh, kind of best tips to save you about 10 years of watching stuff. And uh, you'll have to forgive me, I haven't memorised them, so I'm going to, I mean, red, blue light blocking glasses. I'm going to uh, read from your notes a little bit. I'll try and remember them if I can. Remember the first one was get uh, 10 minutes of sunlight in your eyes, kind of. You don't want to be like staring right at the sun and blinding yourself, but get outside, get some sunlight or get a decent sad lamp. And... Uh, yeah, first thing in the morning, 10, 15 minutes. Does something with your circadian li liver, your circadian rhythm and uh, other stuff, magic, I'll make you feel better. Other thing to do with light is uh, don't get blue light in your eyes for two hours-ish before you go to bed because uh, that does something with cortisol as well and uh, that'll keep you awake and mess with your sleep and mess with your circadian rhythm so basically light in the morning dark at night if you can't get dark wear your blue light blocking glasses and the thing with the morning was uh delay caffeine there's uh, people like picking holes in anyone who's successful like andrew huberman so like caffeine will work if you have it as soon as you wake up but if you want to kind of stick to safe 500 milligrams of caffeine or less per day and you want a more efficient boost for your first cup of coffee wait an hour to 90 minutes because you get your cortisol kick in the morning it'll give you a certain amount of energy and then if you wait an hour to 90 minutes so i'll wait till i get to work to have the first bit of caffeine and then it just means i'll overall I'll have less during the day then i won't need i will need a second cup but I won't need the third cup. Usually I'm, I'm silent after two instead of three. So if you're trying to cut down or if you want to maintain a little bit of tolerance to caffeine and not be completely dependent on it, you're better off waiting an hour, an hour and a half before your first cup of coffee or your first energy drink if you're, or like your 35p energy drink if you're a builder, plus your beer. Wait for 60 minutes to 90 minutes. Right, I'm going to have to have a look at this now. Uh, consistent sleep. Use NSDR techniques. Uh, yoga Nidra. So he's got like a 10 minute thing. I sometimes use it on my break when I've got nothing else I can do in work. Uh, basically gets you in the parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system for a bit, which helps you reduce inflammation and just feel less stressed out all the time, less muscle tension. Helps your digestion work a bit better. You don't feel the benefits of it there and then, really, but if you never get into your parasympathetic rest and digest state, uh, you're going to suffer from muscle tension, IBS, headaches, inflammation, muscle stiff stiffness, causing headaches. Uh, so, yeah, it's like when you do, you used to go to a sound bath, and at the time, you didn't feel well, doing nothing, but it, during that, the time when I did go regularly, I did feel a lot better, a lot more relaxed generally, I was sleeping better generally uh, because my parasympathetic nervous system was getting that hour to work. Um, probably helped I took about the grammar golden teachers before as well, but that's another topic. Um, SDR, so yeah, get, get, have a way of getting into your parasympathetic, your relaxed state. Uh, the double inhale XL is good, and that's on the, on the video, so it's like... And then, Basically, take as long as you can to, to exhale. You do that two or three times. We'll get to some extent, get you into your parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, in terms of that as well, though, magnesium glycinate at night, glycine, and chamomile extract. I can't remember what this proper name for it is. Not allicine, oh, I can't remember. Apigenin. Uh, yeah, they're good for relaxing in the evenings. Uh, yeah, ideally, you would need a lot, but if you do struggle to unwind, those supplements are really good. And having a hot bath is good for sleep as well, because to good sleep, you need your body temperature, your core temperature to drop. If you have a hot bath about an hour before, your body's just pumping out, trying to get rid of all the heat. 
and it'll kind of goes below baseline in terms of the body core temperature. So hot bath is good as well. Bit of Epsom salts maybe too. Uh, Uh, he says, focus on productivity, productivity even, uh, implement the 90-minute rule, work in 90-minute intervals. Don't know why. Use visual, visual anchors, visual cues to maintain um, attention and reduce distractions. Uh, yeah, so, fuck knows what that means. <laughs> Optimize dopamine levels. Uh, Natural activity to increase your dopamine, so sleeping and exercise being the two best. Uh, if you have kind of external uh, sources of dopamine, like uh, sugar or doing coke or something, you'll have a crash and then you'll feel like crap. And that's where you get, uh, you get, well, if you have loads of sugar as well, you'll have dopamine and the sugar rush and then have both of them will crash. And you'll feel inflamed probably as well. So yeah, don't do that if you can help it. Heat exposure, heat shock proteins, cold shock proteins from cold water exposure, uh, really good for your mental health and they can increase dopamine as well. Uh, physiological size, great for stress. So that's two inhales through the nose or three. And then, Chill out of the mouth. Uh, that'll chill you out. Uh, mindfulness meditation, that old chestnut. Um, in terms of supplements, uh, magnesium, glycinate, omega-3. Uh, I don't know if he said this, but you want uh, generally want high EPA level in your omega-3. And yeah, if you've got again, he doesn't. He hasn't said this, but from what I've read, if you do have a pre disposition to dementia because you have the polymorphism polymorphism epo e4 or e5 i can't remember uh you want phospholipid form of omega-3 if you can which is found in krill oil and salmon roe i think so it might be worth having a look into and uh, general oh goal setting define specific measurable objectives to guide actions Divide into smaller manageable steps to facilitate progress. Lev leverage habit loops. Understand cue orientation. Uh, atomic habits. I don't know if he said this, but atomic habits talks about the power of habits. Well, obviously from the title, but one of the things it talks about is habit stacking. So if you want to build the habit of exercising, take an existing habit like cleaning your teeth or having a coffee. And that's your cue to do your exercise for 10 minutes or I don't know if you like to, uh, what else might you do? Have a cup of tea when you get home from work. Anything you do on a regular basis, there's a habit. If you can stack a good habit onto that, it'll help you do it. It takes about two to three months to make habit and then it's kind of a piece of piss to do then. It's a lot easier. It kind of automates it. Automates it. So yeah, if you can get through those first two months of creating a good habit, then you should be able to maintain it. Then Christmas comes and you fall off track and then it's a pain, but yeah, two or three months. Uh, stay hydrated. Genius. Uh, limit screen time. Oh, crap. Uh, especially before bedtime. Uh, and foster meaningful connections and relationships. Uh, so don't marry a brainwashed um, Christian who goes to a revival church. That would be my tip for meaningful relationships. And uh, yeah, he's a good egg. And don't believe all rubbish about him being into seven women at the same time. That would never do that. No man with red glasses would ever do that. So uh, yeah, there's the top tips. And I've just saved you many hours. And I hope you're very healthy from now on. Bye-bye. Uh, some bonus tips, he says, only have two units of alcohol a week because uh, bad for your sleep or something and your brain. And in terms, because he's jacked, isn't he? You want to know what his uh, muscle building principles are. So I've compiled those for you. He says, aim for 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week to promote hypertrophy, which is posh, posh word for muscle growth. 
push but yep uh beginner can start with five ten sets uh and for muscle growth perform six to five repetitions per set for strength gains three to five with heavier loads uh train 30 to 80 percent of your one rep maximum yes and rest for two to five minutes to allow for adequate recovery uh, select compound movements such as squat deadlift and bench press incorporate some isolation exercises so that'd be like tricep push downs and probably curls would be more of an isolation exercise focus on consciously contracting the target muscle so it'd be like like if you're doing your bicep focus, like you know, like make make it grow, look at it, loads. And vary load and repetitions, promoting com comprehensive muscular development. And then for your recovery, adaptation, aim for seven to hours of quality sleep per night and avoid immediate cold post workout. Uh, if anything, you want to go in a sauna, uh, don't go in an ice bath immediately after. You work out for like three hours, I think it is, because that all blunt inflama inflammatory response, which will stop your muscles growing as much. Uh, consume uh, 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of your body weight. Uh, so if you're 100, if you weigh 100 kilograms, you want about 200 grams of protein. Uh, five grams of creatine monohydrate daily. That's actually really good for your brain as well. Uh, but loads of people say it makes you go bald. Maybe it does, I don't know. But uh, definitely helps your brain and your muscle growth. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything you need to know from Dr. Professor Huberman. Yeah, that's everything. All covered.